Hello, welcome to Wonderful Wednesday in the Word. I'm Wesley T. Leonard, Senior Minister for the Southside Church of Christ here in Orlando, Florida. Thank you for viewing again. We appreciate your support, your prayers, your contributions. Listen, beloved, as you can tell from my bright colors, it's summertime in Florida. We suspend all of our ministries, all our programs from June to September so our people have time to be with their families and take vacations and let their hair down a little. So what we're going to do all summer is have encore presentations on Wednesday nights. Tune in. I guarantee you, you'll be blessed. As a matter of fact, uh, it sounds so nice, we thought we'd play it twice. So listen attentively all summer long. We have a different sermon or a different class, and we'll present it on Wonderful Wednesday in the Word every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Thank you. God bless you. Sit back and enjoy. Great is he who's the king of kings and the Lord. Is he who's the king of kings and the Lord of lords? He is wonderful, surprising. study Bible class for the Southside Church of Christ in Orlando, Florida and beyond. What a joy, what a privilege, what an ecstasy to come together to see what thus says the Lord from the holy book we call the Bible. We're glad you're here tonight as we continue this exhaustive study on prayer. Uh, beloved, we're so glad that you carved time out of your arduous schedule. Uh, to be a partaker 
of this heavenly feast. We pray that you're a little bit better when it's over than when it began. Glad you're here tonight. Let us launch into uh, the second phase of our study on prayer. Last week, we talked about the purpose of prayer. That's the why. Uh, we, we delved into uh, the difference between a goal and a purpose. A uh, goal is a analyze, did you meet your goal? You got to wait to the end of the process and see that you hit the mark, that you reach uh, your hopes and aspirations and goals. Uh, but your purpose is not analyzed at the end of the process. Uh, the purpose is determined before you begin the process. Uh, and it's analyzed during the process. And of course, at the end of the process, we need to be a people of purpose uh, in the church. And there's a purpose for prayer. It's not just because routine, a custom, uh, there's actually a purpose, a reason uh, that we ought to go to God in humble submission and pray. We talked about that last week. This week, let's segue and catapult into the power of prayer, the dudamos of prayer. That Greek word dudamos in English translates to dynamite, power. Uh, we're talking about the impact of prayer. Uh, the importance of prayer is emphasized throughout the Bible. Um, the role that prayer plays uh, in the life of the believer really is immeasurable. Uh, the word of God uh, encourages us, exalts us again and again that Christians ought to pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse number 17, Paul says it exactly that way, pray without ceasing. Let me encourage you now, get, get your Bible, get your iPad, get your iPhone, uh, whatever way that you read and study your Bible in 2020, have it there, open, um, readily accessible, so we can flip through the Rolodex of the scriptures so you'll know that these are not my thoughts or my words. It is uh, directly derived from the will and the word of Almighty God. For one, for one to be slack in his or her prayer life, it would be evidence that we do not believe, value, or appreciate the power of prayer. It's a privilege, beloved, to pray. It's a privilege to go before the majestic throne of God. It's a privilege to have an audience with God. We talked last week that you have to qualify to have an audience with God, being a member of his blood-bought, heaven-bound, Christ-centered, hell-proof church. When you're a child of God, you can ask the Father for anything. When you're not my child, you're not eligible to ask me or petition me or beg me or demand anything from me. But once you are a child of God, you are in a unique position uh, as long as you're walking with a penitent heart, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be sinless. If you had to be sinless to pray and ask God, none of us would qualify. Uh, but if you get things right with God, you stay in a position, you can humbly approach his throne. It's a privilege uh, to go to God in prayer. That's why the, hum, the hymn writer said, you remember one of my favorite old time hymns. You probably got to be over 50. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs here bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We're talking tonight about the power of prayer. Uh, but love, for you to access power, uh, to tap in the power, uh, there must be a connection. Uh, power does not just float willy-nilly uh, uh, in the atmosphere. Uh, you have to plug in, tap in, you have to be in range. You have to be qualified, prerequisites. You're eligible to tap into power. Uh, 
Some people have had power and been disconnected. Either they're out of range or they didn't pay their bill. It's, uh, you, you've been on your cell phone and, and, and it's gone out. Either you didn't pay your bill or you left the range of the tower. Uh, you might have electricity in your home and the lamp uh, uh, came unplugged. Uh, the garage door was not plugged in. Uh, your cell phone was not recharging because it's not plugged in. Uh, folks, uh, for you to access power, you must be in a certain position to tap and to use the power that's available. Untapped power is really no power at all. And there's nothing more frustrating than to have power at your disposal but not being able to access it. Many Christians have lived that way in perpetuity. We are members of the body, members of the church, but we yet to access the power that really is at our fingertips. You've heard of black power, you heard of white power, you heard of green power, you heard of red power, you heard of solar power, you heard of horsepower, you heard of manpower, you heard of angelic power, you heard of demonic power, but God's got all power in his hand. And so, beloved, tonight, Let's see, can we access the power of God through, through the avenue we call prayer. There are many biblical examples of how prayer possesses power. You and I don't have any power in and of ourselves. That's why it's important. It's, it's tantamount that we stay within range that we can access and use the power of Almighty God. You see, beloved, there's power of forgiveness in prayer. I, I've been studying this for now a couple of weeks, and it's amazing to me. You know how you get into this, this area to be forgiven by God? Jesus died. He shed his blood for the remission, removal, the eradication, and forgiveness of sin. But you know how you access that forgiveness? Through prayer for the child of God. Uh, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 10, first of all, the Bible says, listen, if you say you have no sin, the Bible says you're a liar and there's no truth in you at all. So we all stand in the need of forgiveness, for we all have sinned. Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's so disturbing and upsetting to me as a gospel preacher, a minister, an evangelist, a man of God who's been on the battlefield for 36 years now. When I see the attitude and disposition of some Christians as if they don't have any faults, no sins, or they believe that their sins are hidden in yesterday's uh, news. Um, uh, you used to be a mess, but that's back when you lived in, in, in California, you lived in Minnesota, or South Dakota, or North Dakota, or Wyoming, and Idaho. And you don't think that uh, people know. Well, people may not know, but God knows. We all never have this attitude of superiority, like we are better than, and we, some things uh, beneath us. Uh, the Bible says in the book of James that all unrighteousness is sin. And even though the law in society characterizes sin and puts us in different levels, God, sin is sin to God. We all need forgiveness for we all have sin. We access that through our prayers. In the book of Acts chapter 8, verse number 22, the Bible says the erring saint is told to repent and pray. We get repentance and forgiveness when we pray to God. That's when we ask for forgiveness through our prayers. Not only, beloved, does we have prayer have the power to get us forgiveness, prayer, power of prayer can bring us peace. Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, you recall, be careful, are anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, now notice Paul's verbiage and language. In everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, 
Let your request be known unto God. Now, while you're praying, Paul says in verse 7, and then after you prayed with thanksgiving, after you prayed, making your supplication and request known, and then Paul said, and then the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your mind through Jesus the Christ. You want peace? Learn how to pray. Listen, folks, you can pray when you can't do nothing else. You may be broke, but you can pray. You may be unemployed, but you can pray. You may be divorced and never married. You can pray. You can have debilitating health concerns, but you can pray. You may be depressed, oppressed, a victim of racism and sexism and pedophilia. You can pray. There's no circumstance in life that you're ineligible to pray if you're a member of the body of Christ. Uh, people who are void and destitute of peace, and again, peace is not happiness. Uh, 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 peace is not even joy. Peace is not the when you're void of trouble and difficulty. Peace is when you find tranquility in the midst of your storm. When everything around you is raging and Everything seemingly is coming unhinged. And the child of God through prayer can find peace. Folks, learn how to get on your knees. I, I know posture is not as important as your position. But, but get on your knees. Pray in the shower. Uh, pray before you eat. Pray when you're riding down the road. Oh, you thought you had to close your eyes to pray. No. Uh, pray in the waiting room. Uh, pray in the bathroom, uh, pray in the operating room, uh, pray in the courtroom. That, uh, that There's no place you can't pray. And when you're looking for peace, and Lord knows we're living in times when man is on this inexhaustible quest to find a peace of mind. The Bible says when you pray, and pray right, and don't be anxious or scared, uh, but everything by prayer, Paul says, with supplication, with, mixed with thanksgiving. Let God know what you desire. And then God grants you peace, not just regular peace. They don't sell this at Walmart. Can't order this from Amazon. This peace, the Bible said, passeth all human understanding. And this peace shall keep your mind and your heart through Jesus Christ. Oh, what a blessing. Not only does the power of prayer brings forgiveness of sin, power of prayer brings peace of mind. And then prayer, the power of prayer, is steeped in strength from God. Uh, if you want that inner strength, that inner comfort from God, you can get it through prayer, uh, beloved. You, the inner man, uh, some of us seem strong. Some of us seem mighty warriors of God on the outside, but we are breaking down and really fragile and midgets on the inside. Uh, I, I pray for strength every day because I need it to deal with my own situations, my family, and even many of you, the man of God, sometimes is burdened with that. The elders are burdened with that. The deacons and church. And we're burdened with one another's calves and concerns as we should be. I pray for strength to deal with what I got to deal with. When you're going through the going through, you're going to need a power and a strength that you won't get from eating spinach. Uh, you got to be over 50 to me. remember Popeye the sailor man, his little girlfriend, olive oil. And every time Popeye would eat some spinach, he'd get these tremendous biceps and triceps and pythons and anacondas like Brother Leonard possessed. Uh, but you don't have to eat spinach. You don't have to eat your vegetables and fruits. Inner strength spiritually comes from this uh, co cohesive relationship with God through Jesus. And you access it through prayer. Paul said, in Ephesians uh, chapter 3, verses 14 through 16, Paul says, now again, all of this power we're talking about tonight is accessed, tapped in from prayer. 
Paul says in Ephesians 3, 14, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father. Paul said, I'm praying, whom the whole family of earth is named. He said that he will grant you to be strengthened by the Spirit in the inner man through Jesus Christ. Folks, many times we look all right on the outside, but we're suffering mightily on the inside. And the inside matters more than the outside. I know we spend the preponderance of our time trying to make the outside look good. We're trying to impress people with what we have tangibly, but it's the intangible. It's never the extrinsic, it's the intrinsic. And if you can be strong from the inside out and not worry about being strong from the outside in, well, how do I get that strength from God, Brother Leonard? Tap into it from prayer. And then prayer also has power uh, to get opportunities from God. Now, there, there's so many things the power of prayer would do. Uh, it accesses forgiveness of our sins. Prayer gives us peace of mind in our storm. Prayer gives us inner strength from God. Prayer opens doors of opportunity from God. You see, uh, Paul often prayed that God will open an opportunity to share and preach the gospel to those who are lost. Many times the church does not grow, and that seemingly, seemingly is a concern of all of us, should be, growth of the church, having baptism, people added, being saved. Uh, many times this doesn't happen because the church is not praying for that to happen. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse number 9, that a great door, a effectual door, is open unto me, that there be many adversaries. Paul said, this enemy is trying to block this door, but God, when I prayed, opened doors of opportunity that I can share the gospel with the Gentiles. Uh, pray before you go to work. Pray before you're with family and friends that you would get a chance, uh, an opportunity to share Christ. He, he that winning souls is wise. Every situation is not a situation to try to convert people. Uh, every moment in life is not a teachable moment. Uh, I've been criticized erroneously. Uh, I go to funerals and I'm there, I'm listed. Uh, words of comfort. Folks, that's not the time to try to send people to hell and explain that the this, this decedent uh, uh, the family who's not a member of the church is not in good standing. Th that's not the time then is to comfort them, give them words of exaltation, and then pray that God would give me or you an opportunity, a window, a door that we can express the gospel of Jesus Christ more fervently. You pray for a door of opportunity. Paul went on in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 12. Paul said, I came to Troas to preach Christ and the gospel, and a door was opened unto me by the Lord. Paul said, I came to preach, and guess what God did? He opened that door. There are many times you prepared and want to share the gospel, but through prayer, you wait for God to open that door to share it. If you speak too soon, it's not good. Speak too late, it's not good. Wait until God opens that door of opportunity. Paul went on to talk about this further in Colossians chapter 4, verse number 3. I hope you got your Bibles tonight. You don't ask me questions. You don't give me concerns. So I just go for what I know. And so I'm still waiting on you. you you're still eligible to seek counsel with and through Brother Leonard. But Paul said in Colossians chapter 4, verse 3, he said, I'm praying for us, all of us, Paul says, I'm praying that God will open unto us a door of utterance. That's the chance to speak the mystery of Jesus to Christ. See, you got to ask God to open that door. It's not always a jar. You don't go and kick the door in. Y'all going to hear this. 
and I don't care. You know, some, you, you you need to just tell people when you're talking. No, every moment is not a teachable moment. You pray for the right moment at the right time in the right place with the right person that God would give you that opportunity to share Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Prayer, the power of prayer has forgiveness. The power of prayer has peace. The power of prayer brings strength from God. Power of prayer is an opportunity. You, God can give you an opportunity to share Jesus Christ. You know what else prayer does? It can access power to wisdom. James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. You remember, James, the half-brother of Jesus, said, If any lack wisdom... Let him ask God, who give it to all men liberally and unbridled. He says, and you, he shall also give it unto you, if you want wisdom. And that's, wit, that's a whole lot different than knowledge. Listen, folks, I meet a lot of educated folk. Even at my old age, I've been steeped in being more educated myself. I don't know if you know by now, we've been in quarantine so long. I finally obtained my credentials and degrees in uh, Christian family counseling and certification and licenses. I'm so thankful that God has allowed me to get a little more academic credentials. Now I can counsel people more perfectly in the will and the word of God with a basis, academic scholastic basis. I'm proud of that. But folks, wisdom is a whole lot better than knowledge. Wisdom is when you know how to apply the knowledge. That's why James said, if you lack wisdom, ask God. Now, if you lack education, go to school. If you lack knowledge, be learned. But if you lack wisdom, ask God. And the Bible says he give to all men. How? Uh, James liberally. He'll give it unto you. And he said, ask without wavering. But be well assured that any man asks wavering shall not receive anything from the Lord. Power of prayer not only can get you peace, not only will it give you forgiveness, power of prayer can give you strength, that's inner strength. It won't give you muscles. Power of prayer won't make you a brick house. It won't make you look good on the outside, but prayer, prayer can give you inner strength from the inside. It can open a door of opportunity, and prayer can access wisdom that only God can give. You know what else prayer can do? It's good for healing. The power of healing lies within prayer. James said in James chapter 5, we just need to learn, church how to believe the Bible and believe the whole Bible. Now, this is interesting to me. Every time I read this from James chapter 5, verses 14 to 15, is there any sick among you? Well, it's always sick, folk, right? Uh, death, taxes, and sickness. Uh, he said, you know what you're doing, church? I'm talking to the Christians, the ecclesia, uh, the called out, the body of Christ. If there's any sick among you, James chapter 5 said, let him call for the elders of the church that they may pray over him. And look what James said, anointing him with all, calling upon the name of the Lord. And they shall pray the prayer of faith, and it shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him him up. Now, now notice the verse. We believe everything in that verse except anointing with oil. How do we divorce ourselves from part of the Bible that we don't like or we think other folk do? The Bible says sick folk, not call your doctor, but call the elders of the church and the elders pray over you, anoint you with oil, calling on the name of the Lord. They don't call Buddha. They don't call Muhammad. They don't call Wesley Leonard. They call on the Lord. And they pray the prayer of faith, and that prayer saves the sick. It heals the sick. How The power of healing physically, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, financially, healing is in prayer. Pray the prayer of faith. I love how the verse closes. And the Lord shall raise him up. The elders can pray. Anybody can pray for you. That's a good thing. But when you heal, it was the Lord that raised you up. Don't get it twisted. 
Uh, it's never man. One planet, Paul said, another water, but it's always God that giveth the increase. Let's follow the Bible. Sick folk, call your elders. And sick folk, let them pray with you. Sick folk, don't get upset. Let them anoint you with some oil. Sick folk, let them pray over you. And when you're raised up, have enough sense to give God some glory. I heard a preacher from Orlando, Florida, I'm trying to remember his name. He preaches at the Southside Church of Christ for the last 21 years. Oh, his name was Wesley T. Leonard. He was preaching this past Sunday about bird sense. He said, think like a bird. And birds have enough sense once they're recipients of all of God's grace, they give God some joy. And once the Lord raises you up using the power of prayer uh, through the venue of elders and sometimes even others, have enough sense to give him some joy. You know what else? As I move to a rapid conclusion tonight, um, this power of tranquility from God uh, throughout the world. Pray for world peace. I, I know we want inner peace, uh, but, but we got to learn how to turn things over to God. Uh, uh, too much of our time and attention, we're worried about things out of our venue and our control. The Bible says in Romans 13, verse 1 through 7, and we worried now about corona. And we ought to be concerned. Worried about the society opening back up. We ought to be concerned. We worried about our leaders and the fights between the Democrats and the Republicans and the Independents and Donald Trump and Joe Biden running against each other. We spend so much time worried about rulings from the Supreme Court and lower, lower courts. God ordained government, okay? We ought to pray for our leaders, pray for our president. The Bible uses the term pray for the king then. But whatever system governs you, you ought to pray for him. But knowing that he is still above and beyond the government, nothing, absolutely nothing can happen without God's knowledge and God's permission. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6 and 7, Thou shalt have a son and call his name Jesus, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, and Everlasting Father. And then Isaiah said, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Folks, you ought to sleep better at night knowing that God's got it. God sees, God knows, and God cares. You see, beloved, it's very interesting that prayer not only has a purpose, but prayer has a plurality of power, peace, the power of peace is in prayer. The power of forgiveness comes from prayer. Inner strength from God, you can access it through prayer. Wisdom from God, that's different than knowledge and different than education. Wisdom, the power of wisdom comes through prayer. Healing from God, be it physical or spiritual, through prayer. And acceptance of the God is still in control even of our government. The Bible says we ought to still uh, respect those who lead us. Let every soul, Romans said, be subject unto higher powers, for they are ordained from God. But God's in ultimate control. You're reminded of that power he has through prayer. It's interesting as we study prayer in these difficult days, these challenges and times, we need not only to know uh, the purpose of our prayer, we need to also know the power of prayer. I appreciate your attentive ear. I can just tell you're sitting there and you're listening and you're uh, taking notes and you are endeavoring to be a better Christian in the future than you have been in the past. Hopefully your prayer life will improve, but through prayer, you access so many blessings from God. May 31st, 11 a.m. Southside Facebook, 11 a.m. Southside YouTube channel, 11 a.m. Southside website, sscoc.org, and 11 a.m. Southside's app. Always remember, 
and never forget the power of prayer. Good night. Oh, you're the preacher or nobody else And yet we get in the way of what he's doing Can't nobody for a thought I say